And with no trade at number two, that 10th overall pick gave us our very first wow moment on Thursday night. The man who made that pick just wrapped up his fourth draft as GM of the St. Louis Rams joins us now on Path to the Draft. Good morning, Les Sneed. How's it going, guys? We're doing well. That was the wow moment because you really hid that one. I mean, of every single mock draft we saw out there, of every projection on O-line, on wide receiver, maybe even a pass rusher, I don't know that anyone saw Todd Gurley coming. You know, we, we definitely tried to keep that one close, close to the vest. And, and I mentioned earlier to Baldy that when, when he started pounding the drum that Gurley <laughs> might have been one of the better better players in the draft early in the down, I was ready to kind of delete all his tweets and, and articles <laughs> and all of that. Well, fortunately, Les, they don't really listen to me that much. So that's, that's a good thing. But I, I got to ask because obviously there's a history here with the way Jeff wants to play football with Eddie George, with Chris Johnson and the value they got at that position, the way Frank Signetti, your new offensive coordinator, wants to play football, it, it, it seems like it was a perfect fit. Definitely. I think as one successful head coach, uh, John Gruden, I think, said after the pick, Jeff Fisher's at his best with a, with a horse running the football. And, and I thought it was fitting that Jeff Fisher was the guy, you know, was a part of, if you want to call it, breaking the first-round drought for running backs. Well, explain to me the, I don't want to say <clears throat> philosophy, but the thinking the method behind the madness here, because everyone thought, Les, you need to rebuild the right side of your line. So you're going to go O-line at 10. You instead said, we can get those picks, the road graders that Jeff Fisher wants on that side of the line. Later, we don't have to spend them that high. And instead, let's just take the most dynamic player there is on the board. Good, good point. We thought he was a once every now and then talent. We couldn't pass that up. It's going to make everybody better, defense and offense. And in doing the analytics... You know, left tackles, we count that as a skill position. Those guys, the average starting left tackle gets drafted somewhere in the second round. That just means, you know what, those guys go early. We did that last year. But when you break it down from the guard to the center to the right tackle, you know, the average round that starters are drafting is, is close to the fourth. So you knew, even though we needed guys, let's take, let's take the difference maker early and then go address, uh, you know, that, that offensive line uh, later in the draft. You know, Les, when, when Todd, you know, tore that ACL against Auburn late in that game uh, last fall, there, there is, is there any kind of a time frame for when you would expect Todd to be healthy? I mean, obviously, you're going to wait till the very, you know, the very moment, whether that's training camp, whether that's the first week of the season. Do you have any idea yet when we can expect to see Todd in the lineup? Yeah. We're going to get him in. We're going to assess, the, assess where he is, put him on a rehab plan. There's no timeline. This was, this was definitely a pick for the long term, mm -hmm. not for the uh, lineup against the Seahawks on opening day. So when he's ready, we'll, we'll roll him out there, but not until then. All right, last thing. Do you expect him week one? Can you say now yet? You know, there's, there's no really – we're not going to put any timeline on that. So we, we got to get him in. He, got, he came in right after the draft, and, and the, our trainers have already looked at him. But – once he gets back in this week, we'll then be probably have a better idea of the timeline and, and when it's going to take. Les, to why was Sean, sorry, why was Sean Mannion the number three quarterback? Well, for us, there's a lot of reasons. I could, I could go on forever about him. Obviously, we like tall QBs. We drafted a lot of tall OL. So our style, hey, let that guy see over the line. We think he can make all the all the throws. Very smart, and you know what. He, when we broke him down situationally, did a lot of things NFL QBs do. Threw a lot of TD passes inside the red zone. That's what you need QBs to do. And, and, and during his career, took an, probably an undermanned, well-coached Oregon State uh, team to two bowl games. So uh, even though the senior year wasn't as good from a team standpoint, we, we saw a lot of things we want to develop in him. Les, as a talent evaluator here, when you look at a guy like Sean Mannion versus quarterbacks that come out of a real – option type of system how much does it help in evaluating a guy like sean that he's playing a pro style system well it, it definitely helps because you can you can when you go watch him on film and even when you go to do private workouts or pro days you can see him do things comfortably that we're going to ask him to do now with the other guys guess what those guys have talent there's no doubt about it the timeline may have to be a little bit longer to develop them and as well it should be because you don't want to put the qb on the field too early because as we know with a QB, if, if he doesn't have success early and it knocks some of his confidence down, uh, you, know, it may, you know, it may take a little longer to get over that. Les, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Zach Stacy. Clearly, he wasn't too pleased when you drafted Todd Gurley. He tweeted one word, and that one word was, yikes. How do you go from nearly 1,000 yards two years ago to getting shipped off for a late-round pick? 
let, let me. I'll start by saying this: the, the tweet it, it wasn't it wasn't a major negative for us. I totally understand his 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 emotions. Zach Stacey's a great human being. That guy's a pro. He's passionate. What he went through, going from a thousand yard season, not even starting the whole year, to necessarily moving into the number two three spot after Trey came in. Hey, he never complained. I give that guy credit. He's a pro. So you know what? We had some teams interested, and we want to do what's right for him because we really respect the human being. And, you know, we got crowded quickly back there, and it was just you know, unfortunate for him. But as an organization, we wanted what's best for that guy, and we feel like, you know, he deserves a shot to go run the ball somewhere. We thought it would be a boring draft for you. First time in four years you didn't have two first-round picks. You, you made it exactly the opposite with Todd Gurley there at the top and then offense all the way down into the seventh round. Les Snead, GM of the Rams. I know you got phone calls to make. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you guys having me. See uh, you guys. Thanks, Les.